Hello, good afternoon law aspirants and a lot many feedbacks of you is really boosting up. The name of the series of ours is vocabulary booster and we boost it is you know uh, the vice versa process the reciprocal you boost us and we boost you. We teachers also need that boost up from you by your feedback, by your responses, by your appreciation, eulogizing, praising that yes this is there and this is there. Criticism and healthy criticism is always welcome. But see very important thing are we ourselves perfect? No we are in the process of learning. We are all learners. I, you and everybody else on this earth is a learner. Nobody can say that I am perfect. I have attained the whole knowledge, entire knowledge of this world. No, we are not. Learning is a continuous process, a process which goes on till we breathe, till we have that, you know, uh, the last breath. We keep on learning, adding to your knowledge. Even I, when I am teaching and I am telling you about the vocabulary words and the roots, I keep adding adding more new words to it. Your feedback when you say ma'am what is the difference between amiable and incable yesterday's one was really praiseworthy and I have really loved to explain you amiable with one person, amicable with the whole community. Yes, if you have seen there is a question of fail it often based on the same thing. And to begin with as I was saying that learning is a continuous process, you should just have a passion for learning passion, desire, curiosity, enthusiasm, vivaciousness, bubbly, chirpy attitude. Yes, that fire of Bhagat Singh in you and that is what is very, very important for you to become a great lawyer. So, when you have that passion for learning, passion and desire to add to your knowledge, to enhance your vocabulary, you will never cease to grow old, never ever and you will be always fresh and young and with a beautiful vocabulary and a long list of words ready for you. Let us begin with our class today and please do write to us, keep telling all your doubts and the words or the problems that you face. Right. I begin directly with the words today, beginning with <coughs> the root today that is Zeno. The root Zeno means foreign, right. As I discussed, I am not taking one or two roots, I am taking subsidiary roots along with it. So, I keep writing a lot many subsidiary roots along with this. So, I take up for today, as I take this is the main word, this is the main plot of the story of Shakespeare and then we have subsidiary words too. This is phobe, that is fear, gen, that is this is not repetition, it is not repetition, welcome each repetition, welcome each rebuff in your life because this repetition is going to take you to heights of success, yes. And the word fill, very important root that means love, love for knowledge, root bio, life. Right, so I would not be, uh, I would not love to hear that mommy did one root or two root, no number, number it is just for you. You feel a change in you, that is very, very important. Now, xenophobic is a person who is afraid of foreigners. So, xeno is foreign and phobic is fear. We have various types of fears. We have the fear of anglophobia, bibliophobia, um, rasiophobia, spenophobia and many more. And all those phobias, claustrophobia can be linked with the root phob and claustro, that is fear of close places. All the phobias, manias, fills, loves are easily done by you. Taking up uh, xenogenesis, the word xeno is foreign, genus class. So, something which is creation of the offspring that is completely different from the either parent means the child, the descendant, the progeny has some quality, something which is not of the either parent, right. As you had asked me to make the sentence, so I do the same. I am making up the sentence for the root xenophobia, that is this word xenophobic or phobia. Uh, many people in India are xenophobic, that is they are afraid of foreigners, they do not want to leave their motherland, they, that, uh, that love and passion for their own country and they never go out of their motherland. Xenogenesis is uh, rarely found uh, uh, when there is early marriages or then when there are very late marriages because the offspring has taken up the qualities of the child. 
Xenophile. Now, the z zeno and the root file, they are two combination of in fact two roots. So, could I write a word xeno plus file. So, you get easily the word xenophile, the person who loves, who is attracted towards foreigners, right. Xenobiotic is chemicals that are foreign to animal life. So, bio is life. Those are chemicals which animal life is not used. So, making up a sentence with the third word xenophile, in India many Indians are xenophiles and anglophiles because you know British has ruled over India for so many years. So, people have love for British too. So, taking up that root also with it and framing up the new word that is Anglo-British. You must have heard of Anglo-Indian? Yes, Britishers who have been residing in India are called Anglo-Indians. We have Anglo-Indian literature, Anglo-Indian writers and many more things with this. Xenobiotic is chemicals that are foreign to animal life which are not known to animal life. So, they are xenobiotic. Many research is being done, uh, a lot many research has been done about the creation of xenobiotic. I hope all the words are clear. The main root xeno and the five subsidiary roots with this that is fob, fear, gen, class or race done many times with you. Phil that is love which are the root for love right. Ben or bond that is good right. Bio that is life and anglo that is British ok. Moving on without these five and the six roots that is xeno foreign. Moving on to the next in this. <coughs> war, V O R or V O U R means eat. The first subsidy root we have done uh, five in this, so I number it at six. Khan is flesh. Herb is grass. Omni is all. Ambi that will be coming up in the next series too and fine taking up 10 subsidy roots and one as the basic root. Now turn to the word carnivorous. You must have heard of carnivorous, herbivorous, omnivorous. Yes, uh, like those who eat flesh are carnivorous that with each grass is uh, words which we use herbivorous and that which is both flesh and grass is omnivorous. Now, when we say that flesh eating animals, this word is not only linked, you may do not take it in this form that this is linked with uh, uh, animals like lion, cheetah and the all those which eat flesh. See, we have various, I would make it in a symbolic usage of English which even clad paper has given this time a form of a short poem that his, uh, his effect, the lover's effect on the beloved was like a carnivorous attack. That is what? Flesh eating, right? Talking of erotic love. We have carnivorous plants or do we have? No. But the meaning would be those which eat flesh. Many human beings are carnivorous or cannibals. They are eating flesh of the other people. Herbivorous is grass eating animals like we would take cow or buffalo which eat only grass, vegetables. Grass means not grass limited to all the green things that is plants in fact I would say. So, that will be a better word for this that is plants right. Omnivorous is eating all. All means here what? See, we have also the word like these. I would like you to specially note these words. <coughs> Omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. Omniscient is all knowing, omnipotent is all powerful and omnipresent is present everywhere, right. Now, omni, these three words are specially used for God. They are synonym for the word almighty God, right. So, the word omnivorous is eating both flesh and grass. We have man is omnivorous animal, bear is omnivorous, crow is omnivorous. So, eating both flesh and grass, right. 
it includes grains too somewhat, but then if it is insect, insectivorous, it is gram, it is gramnivorous, whatever see vor, it is a word which is very, very important. I will tell you one very interesting word with this after I complete this. Insectivorous from the word insect, so it is something which is insect eating, right animals. Gramnivorous from the word gram, that is the cereals. So, they eat gram of the cereals, particular specific thing that we are talking of anywhere we would have this root for that would mean eat, right. Have you noted down the subtree roots also along with this? That is very good. Moving on to the next in this, yes, all done, okay. Uh, I had made the sentence simultaneously, lion and cheetah are carnivorous and his carnivorous effect on her made her leave him. Herbivorous animals are very bovine by nature. Man is an omnivorous animal. Insectivorous are uh, to be, we should be aware, uh, keep our distance or we should keep away insectivorous or gramnivorous from the crops. The farmers are very much aware of this. Noted down this too, okay. Voracious, this is the word. I would looking for. Now, when I am saying voracious, what I want to add on to it is voracious is one wants to eat more and more, more and more. In fact, a person who is greedy, avaricious, avarice if I would make it or avaricious means desire is never satisfied. So, it is insatiable. Insatiable is not satisfied. Now, this can be positive as well as negative. I make a sentence. I am a voracious reader. I love to read. I am very fond of reading. My house is loaded with books and lot of many things. It is one room especially made as a library. So, when I say voracious reader means you want to read more and more, more and more. This is positive. Most of the politicians in India are voracious for power, position and money. Now, this is a negative usage. So, itself the word itself is not not positive or negative. What are you greedy for? What are you looking for? What you want and yearn? That makes it positive or negative. So, when I said that the politicians are voracious for power, lust that is extreme lust for power, money, position, dignity, every person is voracious for that and politicians have a mania for that. This is a negative usage. So, be voracious readers and not voracious for money, right. Devour. Now, if I say devour means to eat quickly, hungrily, very quick, devour. So, as the girl had not eaten for a long time, she was devouring the food. Most of the beggars devour the food, but the usage which I make here, a wonderful usage. If you do not do your homework, I am going to devour you with my eyes. Yes, the teacher can devour the students with the eyes means eat. See, do not take eat means chewing the food only. Broaden your horizon, vasten your arena of knowledge and add more things and things to it. Voracity is very eager to eat or consume food, same eagerness of the desire, almost the same. This is eating very quickly. Ambivorous from the word ambi root, which I took in the last slide also, that is animals which feed on flat leaves, that is both flat and that means ambi is 2 plus war is eat. So, this is 2 and this is eat. So, it is both flat on broad leaves. So, I hope you enjoyed the session, you learned a lot and you continuously will keep learning and learning. Many students ask me when and how much learning is a continuous process is the smile and that same smile with the same smile things I would say keep learning, keep adding to your knowledge. Thank you for today. Thank you students.